I'm Larry Fedorik, and welcome to another episode of my podcast. I Was Eight is a weekly series, stories of that magnificent year growing up on the great Canadian prairie. Timelines do bend a little. Some of the names have been changed, but these stories mostly happened as told. I Was Eight. Chapter Six, A Dollar in the Old West. In this chapter, you might think that since these are stories about me a long time ago when I was eight, growing up on the prairies, that a dollar in the Old West is about me and money. Well, not exactly. I'm going back even further. The Old West in this story is the Old Old West, as portrayed in countless TV westerns and movies. Yes, that Old West. When I was eight, I watched endless hours of westerns. I love them. Still do. Still can't pass a western if I'm clicking through the channels and suddenly I see horses, a Winchester rifle, and cowboy hats. Ooh, what's this? Looks like trouble's a brewing, and the posse's got a ride before sundown. That's it. I'm hooked. I'm in. Yet there was way so much wrong with them. Generally speaking, women and Mexicans portrayed horribly. Gun culture and booze glorified. Granted, the bad guys usually got their comeuppance, but often it was the death penalty, shot down in the middle of the street, or there's going to be a lynching. Of course, the other big problem in these shows was the Indians shown in most westerns as savages, shirtless, bareback pony riders who attacked seemingly innocent, God-fearing white people. How dare they be upset over colonization and arbitrary land appropriation? So we killed your buffalo. So what? We were hungry. And if you think Indian sounds completely culturally insensitive today, back when I was eight, often it wasn't even Indians. It was Injuns. Or Redskins. Of course, no one would use that kind of language today, would they? So when I was eight, I wasn't aware of any of this. Westerns just had an appeal for us kids. I don't know, what was it? Was it the horses, the saddles, the riding, the adventure? What really vexed me about those shows and movies was the money. The dollar. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But first, in our own defense, I do want to say that as kids, we never played cowboys and Indians. We only played cowboys. Now I wish I could say that we were some early trailblazers of cultural sensitivity, but no. To play cowboys and Indians, well, that would require perhaps a wagon train, and then we'd need women folk. Trust me, no girls in town wanted to come out and play cowboys and Indians with all the boys. And none of the guys wanted to pretend to be women folk. At least, not any guys that would come out and admit to it back in the day. And eventually, we'd need a guy named Cookie to clang the triangle when it was chow time. Well, we just didn't have the cast. Nor did we have the props. As it was, only a few of us had actual toy guns and gun belts. The rest of us had to improvise. Hockey stick rifle, kitchen broom shotgun. My idiot friend Philip once brought his dad's electric drill to pretend it was a six-shooter. Didn't work. It's too big, weighed a ton. He kept tripping over the cord, and one day when we shot him dead a few times, he dropped it in some mud. He was grounded for like three weeks. Cowboys and Indians? Out of the question. Cowboys, however, good game completely doable. Just us men. Good guys, bad guys, gangs, bank robbers, saloon, shootout, fastest draw, running from the sheriff. No, no, I am the sheriff. You were just the sheriff last week. Why do you always get to be sheriff? Speaking of which, an afternoon of all of us kids playing cowboys all around town is a glorious way to spend your time, but... It was a little like a giant movie location shoot, except there were no cameras or film, and everyone was a director. Bam, I shot you, you're dead. 
You can't shoot me. Why not? You were just sitting on a tree stump. No, no, I'm driving a wagon. And we said we're not going to shoot the wagon drivers, remember? Or there was always, hey, you can't shoot me. You're dead. Remember we killed you earlier? Oh, I was only wounded pretending to be dead. But old Doc fixed me up. Bam, bam, got you. You can't shoot me. You already fired all six shots. You're out of bullets. Yeah, well, I reloaded. You can't just reload. You have to say reload. And you didn't say reload. This went on and on and on. You didn't kill me. You accidentally shot my twin brother. And now I'm out for revenge. No fair. You didn't say you had a twin brother. Come to think of it, I've since heard that some actual movies are made the same way. But when I was eight, it was a wonder we got a game in at all, or that by dinner time we all went home still friends. Okay, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, you won't be dead anymore. Okay. I think one of the reasons I watched so many westerns was to just get more ideas for our next game of Cowboys. Okay, tomorrow we'll make some wanted posters. Yeah, and Philip will be a cattle rustler. Hmm, what's a good reward for Philip? And this is where the economics of old westerns came into play. And I began to think a lot about a dollar in the Old West. As I've mentioned in other stories, us kids had a pretty good idea of money based on the price of candy. We knew how many treats we could get for a nickel or a dime or a quarter. Money had a value based on the candy index. What really began to vex me when I was eight was the Old West. By my basic understanding, almost everything back then was around a nickel. Five cents. Loaf of bread, a nickel. Small sack of flour, nickel. Bag of oats for the old horse, mm, that's a nickel. Of course, I also saw men drop down two bits for a beer. Sometimes a silver dollar would hit the bar, and that bought an entire bottle of whiskey. Early concept bottled service. Love it. As far as I could tell, $5 got you a bath, a hot meal, and a bed for the night at Miss Dorothy's Hotel. The meal was huge. A big steak. And as far as I could figure out, another couple of dollars got you Miss Dorothy. At the time as an eight-year-old, I had accumulated almost $10 in savings from various odd jobs and birthday money. I wished I could be alive in the Old West with my $10. I could get a room and a meal and a bottle of whiskey and still have beer money. It's not that I drank beer or whiskey, but it's just the idea. All right, you get it. It's the Old West. Everything is cheaper than it is today. But here's the wacky part. Rewards for bad guys? $10,000. We all saw the posters on TV. How does that even come close to matching the middle class economy of the time? Why wasn't everyone a bounty hunter? Sure, there were bounty hunters, but why weren't there more? So many westerns would show men slave through dirt and cow manure just to earn $8 a week. Why not grab a gun, kill some bad guys? You're on easy street. Ten grand, and you could buy a ranch that was the size of Colorado. Be set for life. And the actual bounty hunters? Why didn't they seem like they were really rich? Kill a couple of bad guys? You'd be Rockefeller at that point, for gosh sakes. Now I get it. Not everyone is a crack shot, and not everyone can kill people, but the incentive was there. $10,000 cash when everything cost a nickel? Come on. There is a lonely train called the 310 to you. Sure, some people thought of it. In the original 310 to Yuma, a hapless rancher, so wonderfully played, by the way, by Van Heflin. There's a great name, huh? Van Heflin. 
Anyway, he's willing to risk his life facing bad guys for a quick cash injection to save his little ranch and his family. I'm just not sure why everyone wasn't doing it. Often the ranchers and townsfolk were portrayed as shrinking cowards when it comes to guns, cowering in the shadows of the gunslingers. It took a lot for these people to get their rakes and pointy sticks to take on the evildoers. One town in Mexico, remember, they hired a magnificent group of seven just to help them. For ten grand, though, it would seem simpler just to get a gun and kill a bad guy. If you don't want to face him, ambush him. Shoot him in the back. No one cares. It's a bad guy. Just bring him in, dead or alive. Collect the cash. Live the good life. It also seemed in the Old West that people killed each other for much less. At ten grand, you would almost be expected to kill other people. Hey, Dad, you know, I appreciate the log cabin and the rabbit stew, but why can't we have nice things like the Earp family? His dad fires off a few rounds, and then they go to town for candy. Now, son, if you keep your nose to the grindstone, good things will come. Yeah, I gotta call BS on that, Pa. An average yearly wage in the Old West, I looked it up, was around $500 a year. It was less for laborers. Wanted dead or alive, $10,000. Tell me you wouldn't at least think about it for a 2,000% hike in your wages. And it's not just killing someone, you're doing a public service. One less bad guy. It made no sense. And think about it. Was the government and the police department insane? Were they offering ten grand when probably 50 bucks would have been enough? I've never figured this out. Sadly, these days, rewards haven't kept pace with the economy. Neither has the reward system. I mean, they'll offer money occasionally, but never for the amounts that are 2,000% of your average yearly earnings. Furthermore, the reward is usually for information leading to the arrest of a suspect. And not just for shooting him dead in the street. That is discouraged these days. Oh, sure, you can still kill a bad guy, but the bad guy pretty much has to be attacking you directly. And even then, the laws vary. So, somehow, despite a love of Westerns, I grew up understanding that we can't just carry guns around and solve things by shootout. I appreciated that those Indians on TV were not a fair representation of indigenous peoples and that they weren't really savages only just trying to protect their land from being overrun. I understood that all women in a bar are not hookers. And by the way, how often in a Western did a cowboy kiss a woman who was fighting him off furiously, but he just kept kissing her until she melted in his arms? Ah, a relationship made in cowboy heaven. the money. Never really got the money. Still don't. Kill a bad guy for 10 grand. I mean, today we still reward extreme deeds with either extreme money or sometimes extreme punishment. But there aren't too many chances to suddenly up your income by 2,000%. Well, there is the lotto. I would kill to win the lotto. I Was Eight is a weekly series written, produced, and voiced by Larry Fedoric. A new episode every Thursday. Share your stories with Larry. Or if you like, share Larry's stories with a friend. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Larry Fedoric, that's F-E-D-O-R-U-K, can be reached at LarryFedoric37 at gmail.com. Larry Fedoric 37 at gmail.com.